Okay, so this is the 2009 TU250X, made by Suzuki. It's the sister bike to the GZ250, which we've had in the U.S. for a long time. And they've been building this in uh, Japan, selling it all over the world as a carbureted um, bike, a little standard, for a very long time, but they finally decided to bring it to the U.S. in 2009, right before the economic downturn, and then they didn't get bought up. Uh, they were used a lot for MSF courses because they were leftover stock and people didn't think anybody would want a 250. But then gas prices, when they started climbing, people said, hey, a little 250 that gets like 70 to 80 miles a gallon, that sounds perfect. And you know what? It really is. It's a great bike. So one of the things it really has going for it over its competition, things like the Ninja 250 and the GZ 250, which, yeah, internal competition, I know, um, is that it's fuel injected. And those other bikes are not. The new CBR 250 from Honda is fuel injected, so um, it's also a bit pricier. Uh, so I just want to show you how well that fuel injection works. It is a hot day. I think we're in the uh, upper 70s, low 80s here right now. But I can show you that the engine is very cold. It has actually started up in two weeks. Um, it was started up, or it was. We took it on a ride two weeks ago, and I made a video about it. And there'll probably be a link there right now if you want to look at that, but um, we're going to do another little ride video here in just a minute and you'll see that. But I want to show you how well this fuel injection works. So, see this one's only got 880 miles on it. So flip it to on, you can hear the fuel pump priming up. That's it, it's running. And it's ready to go, I mean, there's no waiting. You don't have to wait for it to warm up or anything. You don't have to turn the choke on and off. It's just ready to go. And it's actually a really smooth fuel injection system. Um, I have two Triumphs, a Bonneville and a Tiger with fuel injection. And they're both pretty snatchy right off of idle. Or anytime you're tipping into the throttle, they got a really big jerk kind of in the whole drivetrain just because of the uh, fuel, in the air injection um, and just some of the, the tuning from being very lean burn engine. There's some issues there. Uh, Suzuki really just nailed it with this. It runs beautiful. And it's a fairly simple fuel injection system. From what I understand, there's not really much to it. Of course, you just got the one cylinder, so it's not a big deal. Um, very simple bike to maintain. A little drum brake in the rear, which works fine. Uh, front disc brake, not the best thing ever, but it works great for this size bike. I mean, this whole bike weighs 300 pounds wet, so you can just kind of jerk it around. It puts up with a lot. I mean, it's, it's got a fair amount of suspension travel. Right now, it's actually on the lowest um, setting here. And uh, you could probably turn that by hand, but my hand's a little soft right now. I haven't been doing much hard work. Oh, yeah, there we go. So we'll crank it up a couple positions. Because I am significantly heavier than my wife. This gives you an idea just how light this bike is, and you're able to turn that by hand without too much issue. Other than that, it's pretty standard Suzuki fare. Um, this is a homemade screen, so that's why it looks kind of junky. Just using some uh, angle iron or angle bracket aluminum and some bent uh, bar stock there to, to turn it into uh, a little holder for this piece of Lexan, which we just cut out. But it works pretty well. It's a good little fly shield. It keeps the bugs off of her torso and her face. So, uh, in just a minute, we'll go for a ride. And I'll show you what this is all about. I'm just going to throw my tail back on here. I'm just going to be going fairly low speeds in town, so um, I'm going without my armored pants at the moment. But I don't really recommend that to anyone. I recommend that get. But uh, these are some heavy Carhartt canvas pants. Very good abrasion resistance, so I'm not worried about them going through. And considering the low speeds and the lightweight bike, if I do go down, I'm not gonna. The armor is not gonna be as critical as it would be if I were, you know, going along at higher speeds on a back road or something, where I'd be pounding the pavement. Not to say I can't get hurt. I certainly could, but you know, we're just gonna use a little common sense here, and I'm gonna take it a little easy. 
All right, so, I mean, that's my arms at full stretch and I'm sitting upright. So, it's really not a tiny bike. The size is actually pretty good. And if I'm a six foot one, and I find it to be fairly comfortable. It feels absolutely tiny because I've been riding 500 pound bikes. So it almost feels like a little mountain bike with a gas engine. hurt you at all, doesn't really penalize you because the response is so smooth that even if you just gun it, it still only revs up just a little bit. I mean, it, it's got some torque, it's got enough torque to move it, no problem, but it's not enough torque to lift the front wheel or, you know, do anything crazy to the ride once you're bent over and lean into a corner, so, I mean, you can ride this thing, be scraping pegs and just crank on the throttle, drop it again, crank it on back again, and you're not going to deviate much from your line, and that's why it's so good for a beginner. Because you don't have to worry about going into corners. You just, you really can't screw it up. As long as you're doing the proper, you know, techniques taught in the MSF, which is, you know, turn, look through the corner, press and lean. doing this all wrong. 